Artificial intelligence has now become mainstream. It's changing the way we live, work and has the potential to revolutionize our world. That's where Google Bard comes in. It's Google's answer to ChatGPT. Bard is a powerful AI assistant that can help you with all sorts of Excel challenges. So join us as we explore Google Bard and learn how it can help us solve Excel problems. Hi there, welcome to Excel Demi, where you can learn to use Excel and solve Excel VBA related problems. I am Ishrak Kader and in today's video we'll be discussing how to solve Excel problems like a boss with Google Bard. So, let's get started. In this video, I'll show you seven applications of Google Bard for solving Excel problems. For this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365. You might ask yourself, what is Google Bard? Bard is a large language model developed by Google. If you've started learning Excel, BART can help you out with Excel formulas. In case you are already an Excel user, then BART can save you time and boost your productivity. To access Google BART, you can click the link in the description below, or you can simply search for Google BART. Once you've accessed the BART website, you will land on this page. Simply type in your text or query in the text box at the bottom of this page. Then click the Send button, and BARD will give you the answer to your question. Let's say we have the Stella Electronics sales dataset, which contains product, date, and the sales columns. We'll begin with simple examples and gradually solve complex Excel calculations with the help of Google BARD. Suppose I want to calculate the total sales, but I'm not sure about which function to use. Let's ask Google Bard to help us calculate the total sales. I'll copy the prompt and go back to Bard. In Google Bard, I'll paste my query in the text box and click the Submit button. Bard tells me that I should use the sum function in the D5 to D14 cell. It's also given me a helpful explanation of how the sum function works. For now, I'll just click this button to copy the formula and go back to my spreadsheet. Back in Excel, I'll select the C16 cell and paste my formula. Press Enter. Great, that's what I wanted. If we select all the sales value, we can see the total sales match up. This means that our formula is working correctly. Now I want to count the number of unique items in the product column. Let's see if Bard can figure this out. I'll copy the prompt and head back to Google Bard. In Bard, I'll paste my query at the text box below and click the send button. Bard is telling me that I can combine the counter and unique functions to get a count of all the unique items in the B5 to B14 range. It's also given me a helpful description of how the two functions work to return the result. For now, I'll just copy the formula and head back to my spreadsheet. Back in Excel, I'll go to the C16 cell and paste the formula. Press Enter. Bingo! There are a total of five unique products. So far, we've looked at some simple examples. Now, you might be wondering how can AI handle more complex scenarios? Here, I want to calculate the total sales between the start date and the end date. So, I'll copy the prompt and go back to the AI model. Just like before, I'll paste my query in the text box and click the Send button. BARD is suggesting that I can use the SUMIFS function to calculate the total sales between the start and end dates. It's also included a breakdown of how the formula works. So let me copy the formula and go back to my spreadsheet. Back in Excel, I'll jump to the C19 cell and paste my formula. Press Enter. 
Great, we've successfully calculated the sales based on the start and end dates. Splitting full name into first name and surname is something that we've all done in Excel. Is Google Bard smart enough to crack this problem? So I'll copy the query and head back to the website. Here I'll paste the query at the text box below and click the submit button. We get a response back from Google Bard. It's suggesting that we combine the left and find function to extract the first name and use the right, len and find functions respectively to get the last bit of the name. It's also included a brief explanation of how the functions work. Here is an example of how the results might look like. So for now, I'll just copy the formula and head back to my spreadsheet. Back in Excel, I'll go to the C5 cell and paste the formula. We can see that the two formulas are clunked together. Let me expand the formula bar. I'll select the second formula, press Ctrl X to cut it. Next, I'll press Enter. And we can see that we've extracted the first name. Then I'll go to the D5 cell, paste the second formula, press Enter. We can see that the surname has been extracted correctly. Next, I'll select the C5 and D5 cells and drag the fill handle tool to copy the formula into the cells below. Perfect! This worked exactly the way I wanted. Nested if statements can be challenging even for the Excel pros out there. In this scenario, I want to grade each exam score. Let's see how Google Bard fares in this challenge. Here, I have a detailed prompt about the grades for each of the score ranges. I'll press Ctrl C to copy the prompt. Then I'll go back to Google Bard. Just like before, I'll paste my query in the text box below and click the Submit button. Google Bard returns me this long if statement. It also includes a brief explanation of what each of the if statements do. Lastly, it provided me an example of the results. So I'll copy the formula and head back to my spreadsheet. Back in Excel, I'll go to the D5 cell in the formula bar, I'll paste the formula. Press Enter. Next, I'll use the Fill Handle tool to drag the formula into the cells below. And that's it. We've successfully graded all the exam scores. Conditional formatting is a handy feature of Excel that can be used to highlight rows that meet certain conditions. I'll ask Google Bar to highlight the rows with A or A plus grades in a light shade of green and use a light shade of orange to mark the rows with fail grades. Therefore, I'll copy the prompt and head back to the AI model. Back in Google Bard, I'll paste my query and click the send button. Here, Bard has returned a series of steps that I should follow to apply conditional formatting. First, it's telling me that I should select the entire dataset, then in the styles group, I'll have to click Conditional Formatting, go to New Rule, then apply this formula to determine which cells that I want to format. Lastly, it's asking me to click the Format button and select a fill color of my preference to highlight the rows where the students have scored A or A plus grades. However, the formula to highlight the rows where students have failed is incorrect since we haven't mentioned anything about 60 being the minimum passing grade. Rather, instead of 60, we want the text fail to appear in this formula. Occasionally, Bard makes mistakes. This is why it's important to have a basic understanding of Excel. Nevertheless, I'll copy the previous formula and head back to my spreadsheet. Back in Excel, I'll select from B5 to D14 range, click the Home tab, in the Styles section, I'll click Conditional Formatting drop-down. Go to New Rule. This opens the New Formatting Rule dialog box. Here, I'll choose Use a Formula to determine which cells to format option. 
and paste my formula in this box. One slight adjustment that we need to make to this formula is we have to insert a dollar sign before our column references in order to fix them in place. So I'll insert dollar signs before column D. Then I'll click the format button, go to the fill section. You can choose any color according to your preference. In my case, I'll select a light shade of green. Click OK. Again, click on OK. And we can see that students whose grades are A or A plus have been highlighted in a light shade of green. In the same way, I'll use conditional formatting to highlight the rows where the students got fail grades. So I'll select from B5 to D14 range, click the Home tab. In the Style section, I'll click Conditional Formatting, go to New Rule. Use a formula to determine which cells to format. I'll choose this option. Now we have to reconstruct the formula since the formula that Bard gave us was incorrect. So I'll type equal, insert dollar sign to lock the column reference D, then row number 5 equals, start double quotes, type fail. Close the double quotes. Then I can click the format button, click the fill section. Here you can choose any color according to your liking. In my case, I'll choose light shade of orange. Click OK. Again, click on OK. Finally, we can see that the row with fail grade has been highlighted in a light shade of orange. All right, all right, BART can help us out with Excel formulas, but can it write a VBA macro from scratch? Suppose I want a VBA macro to find all instances of the word AC and replace it with the text aircon. So let me copy my prompt and head back to the website. Back in the website, I'll paste my query in the text box below and click the send button. BARD returns a VBA script with a brief explanation of how the code works. It's also included the steps that I should follow to execute this macro. Now, I'll copy the code and head back to my spreadsheet. Back in Excel, I'll enable the Developer tab. If it's already visible, then you can skip this step. To enable the Developer tab, right-click on any of the tabs, go to Customize the ribbon. This opens the Excel Options dialog box. Here, I'll check Developer option and click OK. Now our Developer tab is visible. I'll jump to the Developer tab and click the Visual Basic button. You can also use the Alt plus F11 shortcut key. If you want to apply this macro to the entire workbook, then you need to paste the code inside a module. To do this, click on Insert, select Module. This inserts a new module window. However, if you want to apply the code in a specific worksheet, then right-click on that worksheet and go to View Code. This also opens the editor window. In my case, I want to insert the code in a module. Press Ctrl V to paste the code inside the module. Let me briefly explain how this code works. First, the macro activates the target worksheet. Then, a for loop looks through all the cells in the dataset. The if statement checks if the cell value is AC, in which case it replaces with the text aircon, otherwise it moves to the next cell. Then, I'll click the run button. You can also press the F5 key to execute this macro. I'll go to the worksheet. Phenomenal! The VBA macro worked like a charm. In this tutorial, I have shown you seven applications of Google Bard to solve Excel problems. I recommend you experiment with it and see the results for yourself. You can follow these tips and tricks as you experiment with Google Bard. Make sure to provide as much detail as you can to your queries. Exact questions are more likely to return accurate answers. You may also provide examples of the result to Google Bard. Keep your wording precise and short. It's better to avoid complex words that Bard might not be able to understand. Verify the results from Bard. Make sure that they are correct. In case you are not sure about the solution, you can ask Bard to explain it to you. 
Here are the benefits of Google Bard over ChatGPT. Unlike ChatGPT, which is limited to the year 2021, Google Bard can provide up to date information and can also browse the internet. In addition to typing prompts, you can click the mic icon to ask a query to Google Bard. This can save you a lot of time, especially when you need to type in a large question. Lastly, you can export the output generated by BARD as a PDF, HTML, and some other formats. Google BARD is a powerful AI model. However, it's still an experiment, so it can return erroneous results. Sometimes BARD may suggest functions that do not exist. You can inform BARD about the error and ask for a correction. In general, BARD requires a detailed explanation of the question in order to return the correct result. So it's important to break down the question into smaller segments. BARD's shortcomings are especially noticeable in VBA macros. In contrast, ChatGPT fares much better than BARD when it comes to solving Excel VBA problems. Don't forget to download the practice workbook from the video description. Try it out for yourself. It's a great way to improve your Excel skills. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up. If you have any queries, suggestions, or feedback, leave a comment down below. For more information, you can also visit exceldemi.com. Also, to see more helpful content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hope to see you next time. Bye!